خب من امشب میخوام شما رو با یه خود با ساز کلرنت آشنا کنم I want to tell you guys a little bit about the clarinet um, I think in Farsi they call it Qarane which is a Turkish a mix of Turkish and Farsi Ne Qarane Black Ne and uh, I think they have versions that play quarter tone but even with the standard um, uh, clarinet you could play 24 quarter tones uh, per octave now uh, this thing has 3-4 octave uh, range and um, it has a beautiful, nice, intimate sound. But the main point that I would like to make in this video, uh, the main point is that the uh, saxophone uh, has resolved a lot of the problems that the clarinet had. And um, it's a uh, much easier instrument. The, uh, it would probably take you seven times, eight times more hours to get a hang of you know, to be able to do something that you could do in one hour on the saxophone, at least that's been my experience. Uh, the uh, clarinet, despite its beautiful, intimate sound and so forth, has a few problems that I'm going to get into, hopefully. But uh, the main point is that if you want to learn an instrument, saxophone, I had no idea how easy of an instrument uh, the saxophone is, and especially if you play a little bit of clarinet, saxophone just comes across as so much easier. They have resolved a lot of the problems that the clarinet had and it has a much louder volume. Um, it has the same range practically. Uh, easier. The uh, I'll get into it. So but anyways the clarinet I want to play a little few notes for you. It starts with D and because this is a transposing instrument um, when you play an E on this instrument, it gives you a D out. So it's a, everything comes out a whole tone below um, pitch. So um, here's a D, which is really an E on this instrument. register as you go up and um, then the high register the uh, next register is you have to press this button There are two, it's, the sound is beautiful and it's addictive, it's hypnotic, um, it's very intimate, but you know, so is the sax saxophone, has a pretty nice sound too. Um, at nights, it's just beautiful to play the clarinet because it's quieter, you're not disturbing your neighbors, although there's mutes for the saxophone also. And uh, in the first register, as you start from E, F, G, you go up, uh, down here you have a bunch of... Um, these are identical. They do the same function as these guys. It's just to give you um, options. You could play your E here, or you could play it here. But anyway, so it's E, F, G, A, uh, B is here, B flat is here, C, D, E, and then uh, F, G, but you have to hold it, of course, from below, G, and then A, a flat and then um, and then B flat you have to press both of the both of these to get B flat and then for B you have to go to the next register you have to press this thing and you have to go back to holding everything down and these guys
it sounds like the Persian char uh, Ross Banjga or Mahur, but it's actually a bit that I took from a Beethoven piece. I wonder who stole from who. Did Beethoven learn this thing? <laughs> which which way was the cultural influence? I think the Persians copied it from Western uh, music, probably in 17th century or 18. Oh, Beethoven was you know 1810. We're thinking 1800. That would be 19th century. I wonder at what point did this. Mahur major scale came to Persia. I don't think it's inherently a Persian scale. But anyways, this bit is a bit of a, a inherent part of the Radif. <laughs> But it's also Beethoven. Anyway, so here's the clarinet. The two, three problems that I have with the clarinet that I guess people don't talk about. One is that about half an octave revolves up here. So after you run out of your fingers up here, then you have to deal with G, G sharp, A, B flat. It's just a whole bunch of few notes here that you have to deal with. So basically in every register you do an octave and a half and then you have to switch over. Then the second problem is that the um, going over the break as they call it, meaning as you go up to B flat and then you have to go back to hold your fingers down. You know, you can hold uh, pretty much after G, you can hold all of these guys down again. As you're going up, by the time you get to G, you can hold these guys down tight. So when you go back to the next note, uh, to B, you already have these guys down. But but still, going, learning how to go over the bridge, it does take a while, and it's kind of clumsy. Uh, the design is not very good. There's not any overlap up here with the down here. There should be a few notes that overlap like the flute, like the saxophone and so forth. Uh, another problem is that this thing tends to squeak and even really good musicians sometimes by mistake, you know, just all of a sudden you get a really high note, high overtone out of this, which is just embarrassing and and that's just part of the instrument, you know, you, it takes years and years to avoid that. Um, then the other thing is the um, well, the, having multiple notes here for E, F, and F sharp, and same thing E, F, and F sharp, and the fact that you have to constantly uh, plan where you're going, depending on what music you're playing, you have to know whether you use this guy, E, and then F here, or which way. Uh, it's a little bit of a, again, uh, annoyance that you have here, and um, the squeaking and then the fact that the bridge doesn't have any overlap as you go throughout all the way through the first register when you go to the second register there's no overlap there's no note that's in common although you could do the B here too it's a little bit of a pitch difference but at any rate um, it's an intimate instrument. It is challenging. It takes more time than the saxophone. But um, these technical things, I think, are engineering problems that should have never been there to begin with. So, and that's why I feel like um, I have trouble putting up with an instrument that has simple engineering problems. So, uh, on the saxophone, they have resolved a lot of these problems, solved it. And um, okay, so you have an octave as you go as you as you start from the bottom. It starts from C. Of course, it's a transposing instrument. This is an alto sax, and of all saxophones uh, of the, of the entire saxophone family, the alto sax is the easiest to get a hang of. And uh, you start with well, technically it goes to B flat, but um, but let's say you start from C, then D. E, F, G, and up here, A, B, C. And then you can go to D even. You have a bit of an overlap with the next register. So when you overblow, if you blow a little bit harder or if you push this button, 
you go uh, from the first octave to the second octave and you have quite a bit of overlap here you start back you have the C D E flat which you also have here in fact you have uh, up and down you have B flat uh, that's common both at the top and bottom B flat B C C sharp D D sharp and that's quite a bit of overlap and the fact that you just have an octave and then you go to another octave so the notes the fingering for the D is the same in the first register and the second register which is not the case on the clarinet again another annoyance so technically we say that the clarinet overblows at the twelfth which means you go through it an octave and a half until you go to the next register and then another octave and a half whereas the saxophone and the flute they overblow at the octave which means you just do C to C and then back again did I wet this thing? I, I had it waited before the video, let's see. <laughs> have them down here too. This is your D, this is your D, uh, 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 E flat or D sharp and so forth. Uh, it's pretty loud, it's a pretty loud instrument. It, uh, it can be pretty intimate depending on what octave. At the bottom it, it's, it's a little bit too loud and too powerful for me. It's a, a bit of a truck horn. <laughs> on both instruments so it doesn't quite help but I, I hope this was a little bit of an introduction you get a taste of a flavor of what they sound like um, I got these instruments at Costco at Costco.com I think the clarinet was like hundred I don't know sixty dollars or something and the saxophone was about I think three hundred three fifty again uh, these are pretty capable instruments uh, you know uh, 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 clarinet as hard as it is, it, the challenge makes it attractive actually. We, we always get attracted to things that don't come easy it seems. The harder we work for them, the more we I don't know, fall in love with them in a way. Uh, it's a, I'm amazed that it has not completely gone out of favor because pretty much at the turn of the century, like around early um, 1900s, people were switching as Cindy Bechet did, they were switching from the clarinet to the um, soprano sax. Now the soprano sax, I have one too. Uh, it's a little bit more challenging to get a sound. I think the consensus is that it's not really quite easy to get a, a good sound out of the um, uh, soprano sax, but it's okay. It's not too terrible. Um, the clarinet comes across as finicky. A little bit finicky, you, uh, out of control, all of a sudden you get a squeak out and it takes years to master the instrument so that that doesn't happen. The, uh, a lot of the notes are, are congested up here and down here. It's not in the main body of the instrument. Um, um, the, the break doesn't have any overlap. You, you, you're going one by one, you're lifting your fingers and then all of a sudden you have to go back to grabbing everything. I mean, you, 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 you cheat basically. I mean, in fact, that what happens is that the fingering charts are not correct. The fingering charts for the flute and the clarinet should be corrected so they show you as you're lifting your fingers, 
by the time you get to the upper notes, in this case G on the clarinet, you are they should really show you to be holding down all the notes on the right hand and just only lifting the uh, left hand. So when you go to the next register, you um, you have everything down already. Uh, anyway, so uh, definitely much more um, capable of, than Persian instruments. You know, Persian instruments like the sitar and tar, they take so much energy and they're not, you don't have that many notes ready under your hand to be able to do a music that uh, moves too far. Um, so definitely, definitely any of them is superior to a lot of Persian instruments like tar, sitar, santur and so forth. But, um, but that said, um, I think the saxophone is a lot easier. It's a lot you know, I, It's so easy. It's almost I'm treating it like uh, Spanish. I remember when I came to America 30 years ago, I was so bored that my first six months that I started learning French actually. Uh, and then I, all these years I didn't spend enough energy on uh, Spanish because I thought, oh, Spanish is easy and I'm going to pick it up as the years go by. So, <laughs> but in fact, because of that, my French improved, my, my Spanish didn't really that much. Um, I just know a little bit of conversational Spanish. So same thing here actually with the saxophone, I'm not really putting that much time in it because I feel like, gosh, this is so easy.